and take a look at how we can go about customizing our preset. So right now, in order to customize our preset, what we have to do is just go back into the content folder. And then in the Stage Effects Pro folder, here again we have our presets that we started with. And just a reminder, this is where you would start off any project that you intend to use Stage Effects Pro for. But then down here we have something called Stage and Lamps. And let me explain what this is. What we can do in this folder is turn on the stage. So here's a preset called Stage On. If I double click on that, this will put a stage into our scene. So now I have a stage in here with the fan in the background and the lights going on here. And if I press play, everything's still animated. So this is really neat. Now that fog animation, I could have done something better with that. But nonetheless, we, we have our stage here and then we have our animation that's still in here, which I think is really nice. And within this folder here, we also have an option to turn reflections on. So we can turn on reflections for the stage. In order to see your reflections, you're not going to see the reflections in OpenGL mode. You have to be in software mode. So let me go into the render settings tab. I'll set this to software mode. I'll hit accept here. And let me zoom in on this. I'm going to try to position this in a way where we can see the stage and maybe see some reflections in here. So I have the reflections turned on for the stage and I can pop up my timeline and I'm just gonna go to a position here where I have some lights coming down, maybe right there. All I have to do at this point is render this. Now I'm rendering in, just so you're aware of this, in my render settings, I am rendering in software mode now. In OpenGL mode, this is still gonna render very quickly. So that's the OpenGL render. This is a very nice render in OpenGL mode. So we can render this entire animation in OpenGL very quickly. But right now what I'm going to do, just so you can see the reflections here, and typically you'd want to use this more for creating a still image, but just so you can see the reflections taking place here, I'm going to go into my render settings. I'm going to turn this up to software render, and I'm going to render this in software mode. So just clicking render. And as this is rendering, I'm going to pause the video and then resume it. Here's the render of our scene. And the one thing I wanted to point out here was the reflection that's showing up now. So in software mode, you will get a reflection on your stage. I do want to mention that I did have to go and stop the render. I canceled the render halfway through and reposition my camera to get this reflection in here. I didn't really have anything in my scene here to reflect off the stage. So I did reposition my camera, but notice that we do have a reflection of the background coming up on our stage. And here is the fan reflecting off the stage. Now, if you would have characters on the stage here, you could be zoomed in on here and you would see the reflections of the characters on the stage. So there's an element of realism going on here with the reflections taking place. And you can see that in software mode, the lighting does look better in software mode. But again, this does take a little longer to render. And then with the reflection here, this does increase render times dramatically, having reflections turned on. So it's something you want to consider if you're going to be doing animations, whether you want reflections on or not. But for still images, you definitely want to keep reflections turned on here. And let me close this up for now. Now, there's one thing I didn't mention about the fan here, which I want to get to. And if we go back to our scene tab in Stage Effects Pro, back on this master handle here, and choose the fan node. We have this option here. Let me close this. I'm going to zoom in on this. We have this option here to tilt the fan also. So we can tilt our fan. So let's say if you want the fan to come off something like that, you can do that. You got to be careful here with the tilt though. You don't want to go too far with the tilt. But we can tilt the fan down around this way, and we can also turn the fan. Just so you know, you have these rotation options here, and this can be animated as well. I mean, we could do something like that. 
can have that animated and turning at the same time. So at this point, I do want to talk about some of these other elements here. We just took a look in the content tab here at the stage and lamps. And what I want to do is go back to the zero presets and I'm just going to go file and I'm going to start a new scene here. And then I'm just going to load up another preset and what I'm going to take here is this maybe seven high preset. As this is loading up, I'm going to pause the video. Right now what I've done was I've created a new scene and I've loaded up a new preset here just so we can go through and take a look at some of these other features here that you'll find within Stage Effects Pro. And the next thing we're going to be taking a look at is the floor here. And in order to do that, what I want to do first is go back to Stage and Lamps. And I'm going to turn the stage off for now so we don't have the stage showing anymore. And then I'm going to move to the floor and I'm going to turn the floor on so that would be down here. We can choose pattern on. And now we have a pattern showing up on our floor. And I just removed the stage because with the stage there, it does cover up a good portion of the pattern. So let me just show you what it looks like with the stage on. A good portion of the pattern is covered up by the stage. So I'm going to turn the stage off for now. And then in the floor area with this pattern, and this is a really neat effect because we can changes pattern to different kinds of patterns here. We have a really nice checkerboard pattern that is here. And just like the stage, we can add a reflection to the floor here. So I can turn reflections on for the floor right here. All right. And even something just like this would be a nice kind of scene just to showcase some, some of your models. And this would produce a nice render for you, especially if you have, when you have all these fog and beam lights in here, you can move these beam lights in a little bit, add a character in here and render your character. And what you would get is a really nice reflection too with your character on the floor. But we do have all these different pattern options to choose from. In addition to that, for some of you more advanced users out there, what you can do is also go into your surfaces tab and you can locate that floor item in here. I collapse all here. We can come down here and locate the floor. And this again is for some of you more advanced users out there. But here would be the floor pattern. And then you can go through here and take a look at where some of these diffuse maps are. And you can go ahead and add your own patterns in here. It produces the same effect. There's this self illumination effect going on with the floor, which is a neat effect that's taking place. And then we have our color options here. We can choose different colors for the floor. And we also have the RGB option. Okay, so if I wanted a black and white floor, there we go by using the RGB. And here's white actually. But you do have that RGB option right here for the floor. In here, we have our fog options. Now the fog options, we have three folders. They're labeled close, far, and mid. And it is set up in preset folders that are in layers here. So we have three layers that make up the fog that gives it the depth that it has. And you do have the option to turn off the layers. So here's the close. I just turned that off. I can turn off far and I just made far hundred percent, but I can turn off far and then I can turn off mid and you'll see that all the fog is gone now. Let's start with a close and then just let's turn that on. We can turn it on a hundred percent. We can turn that on 25%. It's still there. I can still see it a little bit, but 25% is a low intensity fog. And then we have 50 and 75. And then adding these layers here will give the fog a little more depth. So if we turn the mid on to 50 and then the far range, we set that to 100. We have a denser fog here. And playing around with these different intensities gives the fog different effects. Okay, so if you want a really dense fog, you would go up into the 100 area. If you want less dense fog, you might want to try around 50 or 25 even. There would be 25. And you don't necessarily have to use all these layers either. If you, you just want a slight amount of fog, you can certainly just turn off a couple layers and leave one or two layers showing. It all gives you a different effect, and it all depends on the way your scene is arranged. But we, then we do have the option to just choose colors here for each of the different layers. So here's the green fog for the close. If I want to go to the far and maybe choose purple and then mid here, maybe take another green or purple. 